Good afternoon. So, um, please allow me to present our research entitled Analysis of the Integrated Water Resources Management Framework, the case of Mikabai and Marilla Obando River System. I would like to acknowledge my co-author here, Dr. Emilia S. Visco, yes, um, and she will be helping me in terms of us answering your questions. <laughs> All right, so to start, um, So, can you ever imagine the world without water? No, no. We are not alive if we do not have water. Um, water is a very important resource, not just for human beings, but also as a capital in social ecological systems. And that would involve both the biotic and the abiotic components and the interactions within these groups. And water is also a determinant of a livelihood and an important resource in various communities, especially in um, local communities that are depending or living near the coast area. Um, we look at this one as not as a conflicting uh, provisions of water, but rather we look at the services given by water in terms of enhancing the livelihood and in being an important economic resource. But on the other hand, we look at water based on the uses. So if we look at water based on their uses, then we now have a conflict because at times water can be used for its regulatory function and water can also be used for its provisioning fu functions. Some examples of the regulatory functions of water will also be tackled in terms of the climate regulation, water purification that would need to preserve the riverbeds in order to control flooding and in also in order to increase the diversity, especially in mangrove systems. On the other hand, water's provisioning function enables us to gather produce such as fish and other um, water organisms. Then we also utilize the water for fish plants or aquaculture and water can be also a body wherein um, waste materials can be discharged. Hereby, they are effluent as discharge points. So, for one community, they would depend on water for their, their food and livelihood, but for one community, an industry, they would depend on water so as to become their discharge points. So, in the case of the Philippines, we now have a concern in our the quality of our water resources. As DNR, especially in 1996, uh, mentioned that almost half of the classified rivers did not meet the standards that are, that would mean that the water quality are not in their most beneficial form. Thus, they are polluted already. And the pollution comes from the domestic, the industrial, as well as the agricultural sources. In this case, you, we will, realize that there are really indeed conflicting uses of the water and it is sad to know that 50 of the 427 rivers in the country are now considered as biologically dead and that would mean that the polluted status of the water will have an impact not just on the ecosystem health but more so on the public health um, in the case of Paragas he expounded that 31% of the illnesses in the country is attributed to the presence of poor water quality. So we are very much aware that we need to manage this very important resource. And there's a pressing need to properly manage the water through time, not just in a one-shot deal, but through the years so that to ensure the sustainability of the, re the provisioning services of this water. Hence, the enactment of RA number 9275 for the Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004. And let me quote that this Republic Act aims to protect the country's water bodies from pollution from land-based sources that would include the industries, the commercial establishments, agriculture, as well as the domestic activities coming from the household or community. 
And the basis of the Philippine Clean Water Act is an international um, framework and this is called as the Integrated Water Resources Management Framework as well as the Sustainable Development Framework. We are very much aware of the importance of the sustainable development and the integrated approach in terms of conserving our resources so as to promote the balance between economic, environment, and social development. So, um, let me present to you the IWRM structure with its three pillars, mainly the enabling environment in the center, institutional framework, as well as the management instruments. Um, the IWRM is a process that promotes the coordinated development and management of water. Hereby, you have the management instruments such as the different assessment forms, the information dissemination frameworks, and the allocation instruments. Also, it aims to uh, promote the coordinated development and management of land and related resources in order to maximize the economic welfare, hereby promoting the, uh, the concept of equity, which would be the allocation of resources to proper allocation of resources to the stakeholders depending on their needs. Hence, you would look at the presence of the policies that would contribute to such. And then, it would also maximize the economic as well as social welfare, hence the concept of institutional framework as a pillar of integrated water resources management. At the end, um, when we gain economic efficiency, equity, and environmental stability or uh, in integrity, through these pillars, we would want to have a balance between water as a livelihood and water as a resource. So that's the main basis of the water, uh, Philippine Clean Water Act. And one of the conditions that has been tied up to the enactment of the Clean Water Act of the Philippines would be the provisions of the law that would create the water quality management area. And we would want that the three pillars of IWRM be embodied in such unit of analysis. Um, it is very difficult for us to enact the IWRM pillar in all of our river systems and also in our, our, our bodies of water. Hence, the government um, made a uh, move to create what we call the water quality management area. And in terms of looking at the water quality manage area, management area, we have the first WAGMA, which is the Mikawai and Marilao Bando River System. And they would want to look at the concept of water governance in terms of ensuring human rights, in terms of promoting environmental justice, and in terms of promoting sustainability. Please take note that these are all embedded in the framework of IWRN. The objective of the study is to evaluate the implementation and management of the MMORS WACMA area in reference to the Philippine Clean Water Act based on IWRM. More so, it would aim to look at the lessons and insights that could be an input in the management of other areas as this is the first attempt of a policy review in the Philippines. Aside from the action points that could be gathered from this research, it is also aimed to contribute to the literature that advanced the integration of an ecocentric epistemology in terms of social work as a discipline and as a professional practice. Um, as part of the Travel Grand um, Award given by CIRCA, uh, I was given a chance to present another part of this, this research to South Korea and the main um, theme would be for social work and social development advance, advancement. So uh, there's 
for us, for those who are working in the field of human ecology or other related disciplines in development, we are very much aware of the importance of looking at both the human and the ecological system. But for the case of the social work um, discipline, they have been focusing much on the human aspects and now they are integrating the concept of the environment in terms of improving the welfare of the people. So that's one good advancement that is a paradigm shift in terms of the field of social work. Um, so let's now proceed to the study area. This is the MMORS walk night. Is, it provides ecosystem services to several urban and rural communities from Valenzuela, Marilao, Obando, and Mikawayan in Bulacan. It also connects the human activities of the people, hence it is a medium of cultural interaction and identity. It is a 52 kilometer long Class C river system and it has been, when we say Class C, then we know that it is a bit polluted. It is polluted actually because of the untreated municipal wastewater coming from the industry and from the different households in the area. Also, uh, what makes the concern in MMRS more important is that there's the issue of small-scale fissures and at the downstream portion of the area, and they are receiving the pollution coming from the affluent industrial upstream areas. So please note now of the concept of the integration of equity and in terms of the benefits gathered by these different stakeholders. For the methodology, um, for the pre-implementation, of course, we did the document review, coordination with the gatekeepers. Then we also would want to mention the importance of getting an approval of the resolution to, from the MMOR as WACMA to endorse the project. Hence, we are able to uh, check the documents and become privy of important and significant um, information and was also able to interview the different members, uh, the members of the different organizations belonging to the, the WACMA governing board. Then we went on to the design of the instrument as well as the pre-testing. For the implementation portion, um, we employ focus group discussion as well as key informant interview and the survey. For the survey, the respondents include the WACMA governing board members and we assess the level of their awareness when it comes to their functions and responsibilities as well as the level of the implementation. So for the results and of the analysis, uh, allow me to present it to you using the three pillars of IWRF. Um, for the first pillar, which should be the enabling environment in MRS, in order to integrate all efforts of rehabilitation, we realize that we have national policies and that they are in fact in place in order to balance the interests of the various stakeholders which are involved in water governance of AWACMA or any wetland in particular. But then again, um, in terms of the presence of this policy, we also would need the support for the funds that would enable the local government units as well as the various stakeholders to promote such activities that will integrate all of the efforts to conserve and to manage the resource properly. And in this case, um, we know that the approval of the policy regarding the access and utilization of the National Water Quality Management Fund as well as the Area Water, Water Quality Management Fund is still pending in the Congress. Wala pa pong pera. Uh, may pera na po mula sa mga fines, mula sa mga um, contributions, allotments, and appropriations, pero hindi pa po aprobado ang paggamit ng pera nito. So, uh, that's, that's the dilemma of the stakeholders who are promoting the uh, management of the resource. And even if the money has been pending, or the approval of this has been pending in the Congress, the different stakeholders were able to come up with ways in order to secure funds. And for that would be in terms of 
obtaining funds from international development agencies and donors. And these funds are also forced to WACMA governing board members, specifically the, specific, the projects. We have um, Asian Development Bank, Green Cross, of Switzerland, Coca-Cola Foundation, also um, Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation through the Pure Earth or what we know as the Black Smith Institute Incorporated. Also, uh, aside from these donors, we, the WACMA Governing Board also secured funds from their respective department or from the LGU. But please take note that the access towards these funds are very dangerous and they have the loans. What would be the implication of all of these um, actions coming from the stakeholders? This has an implication in terms of the sustainability of the different projects. If we secure funds from the donor, then we know that the objective would be donor driven also. And after the project, then it might be possible that it will, the efforts will not continue because of the lack of funds. Also, looking at the, that's at the national level, looking at the local level also, we have the creation of MMORS WACMAS 12 resolution. But please take note also that the main focus would be in terms of the organizational structure of the WACMA governing board. And that would be in terms of the creation of an interview technical secretariat, adoption of their BMG logos, and the formation of the multi-sectoral group. So in this case, the WACMA Governing Board is yet a, a young organization and they have to come up with mechanisms that would enable them to work properly together in an integrative manner. Uh, these are the themes of LGU environmental policies in relation to MMOR and SWACMA and like what I've mentioned earlier, uh, most of them would focus on the organizational structure as well as the local, the, uh, the capacity of the local chief executive to approve projects, secure funds, or release funds. And some of them have been working on their environmental code and framework as well as some projects that would include fines and penalties. We are not the only country that has implemented the presence of WACMA based on IWRM framework. And we have seen that in other countries, there has been empowerment in terms of local collaborative initiatives. And that is also what we would want the Philippines to have. But according to the literatures, having such collaborative initiatives that are working together and functioning together properly is very challenging as at times uh, it has an effect in terms of the devolution of the power, the training, and the budget of the LG. This, on the other hand, would again have an impact in terms of the sustainability of the projects and the programs. The second pillar would be the institutional framework. And the purpose of the institutional framework would be to become a nexus in terms of the integration among various stakeholders. Please take note that the WACMA Governing Board uh, is, consists of various um, agencies coming from the national, the regional, and local agencies. It also has representatives from the private sector, from government-owned and controlled corporation, as well as the academy. And among the ordinances that has been enacted and also based on their specific rules, they have each member has been mandated to perform specific roles and responsibilities. But then again, they would want to promote the concept of co-management and that would be the sharing of responsibilities, rights and duties between the private <coughs> stakeholders. In this case, they are working in a decentralized approach wherein the local stakeholders or the users would be involved in terms of the decision-making process. So, in, in that way, it would promote the interest 
and also it would promote the well-being of the different sectors. When we look at the well-being, then we address the needs, the wants, and also the interests. Uh, what is the importance in terms of facilitating a co-management is that the local users are involved in the decision making and this would be equivalent to doing the nation state. But of course that is the ideal setting that should be happening in terms of promoting co-management. But we have concerns in various implementations and this includes prolonged period of decision making, um, decreasing number of representatives from the members of the governing <coughs> board. Why? Because at times the local chief executive will not attend, for example, he will just he or she will just send a representative. And that representative cannot decide for their specific sector. They would need to go back to the office, present what has transpired, and then uh, wait for the decision of the body. So that would hasten the period of decision making and at the same time it um, decreases the interest of the people because of the process. The third one would be the weak implementation of policies and the lack of external assessment. We have the WACMA 10-year action plan and in the third pillar we look at it and we have found out that there has been no external assessment regarding the implementation of such. On the other hand, we also would want to focus on the level of awareness on the roles and the actual responsibilities of the WACMA governing board and they have rated themselves with the number uh, rate of three and this would be translated as inadequate but minor improvements in the system will make them adequate. They have been informed and, ex uh, and the level of measurements have been explained to them in detail and they were very honest in terms of expressing their assessment to us. So when we have uh, validated the result to the WACMA governing board, they actually accepted the rate that was um, generated through the survey. The third pillar would be the presence of the management instruments in order to strengthen the WACMA Governing Board's communication framework and program. And we also have mechanisms in place. One would be the presence of MMORS WACMA 10-year action plan. The second one would be the presence of water quality modeling um, system in the area, Blacksmith or Your Earth has tied up with UPLB in order to come up with a database and um, that has been linked to a GIS so that they could come up with maps showing the different um, level of pollution and different level of uh, hazards in the area. Also, we have the BSI came up with survey tool for water quality management plan as well as MMORS WACMA governing board training needs. This has been part of the organizational development component of the project wherein this research has been tied to. On the other hand, um, we would want to focus on the information systems framework because in the presence, in the concept of co-management, open communication is very important and the way that they could feedback their findings from one agency to the other is also uh, a big step, um, is also important in terms of sustaining the efforts towards rehabilitation of the river system. So we found out that there has been no regular feedbacks on the progress reports and the river quality monitoring results. For example, if uh, DENR would go to the field and come up with data regarding water quality, this has not been feed, uh, given back to the community. So the community do not know if the water quality in the area has improved 
or it has worsened. And that also have an impact in terms of their sense of accountability. Also, they believe that the Duakma Governing Board, because of the lack of feedback, has no sustained efforts regarding and actions regarding river rehabilitation. It's just like um, they expressed to us that they would, the Wakma Governing Board members would go there, get samples, and then that's the end of it. But so they want to have mechanisms that would ensure uh, a stronger feedback and also communication framework and program. Such, in a way, we pose to them important questions like who will communicate, how often will the communication be, and what media will be used in terms of communicating the results of all these initiatives. Also, we realize, and they also realize through the focus group discussion, that they would have to come up with a formal mechanism that will consolidate and systematize multiple reports reports required by different agencies. For example, um, DNR would require one report and then such date, the data in that report will be also utilized by HLURB or the different planning agencies. And they are having difficulty in terms of complying to all of that report. So they would want to have one specific format of the report so that they could submit it to multiple institutions rather than um, using all of their efforts to submit to the needs of each institution. More so, uh, in terms of the management instruments, in this case, we would want to give emphasis on the needs of the fish farmers. The fish farmers here would be those who are depending on the water coming from the upstream portion for their pens and they are involved in aquaculture. And this would um, help in terms of the policy reforms that will focus on social ecological management practices and market mechanisms. So in this case, the WACMA Governing Board would have the power and also the authority to come up with instruments that could enhance the access of the different fisher folks to market and at the same time, two technologies that would promote um, better utilization of aquaculture. So as uh, we look at it, that we have many lessons derived coming from the experience of MMOR as WACMA. We have small successes, and we could not uh, give lesser emphasis to that success. For example, the presence of mechanisms, uh, the presence of management instruments, although there are, there are more works that should be done, and the presence of the co-management structure in terms of the institutional arrangement. We need to draw our strengths coming from all of these successes, but we need not be blinded by these successes because we know, of course, that water pollution makes the population more vulnerable to poverty and in this case, by reducing the viability of the livelihood, increasing the vulnerability um, towards flooding and also towards the shocks that could be brought upon by climate changes. And we also would want to emphasize that there are still pollutants coming from the domestic and industries that are present in the area, even if we have existing and appropriate policies. So the recommendations of the group would be first so as to ensure the sustainability, then the signing or the final approval of the NWQMF and the um, Area Water Quality Management Fund as well as the guidelines be approved already and that there should also be formulation of more ordinances that will prioritize integrative water resource management activities programs and projects. So that would be for the first pillar enabling environment. On the other hand, we also came with the conclusion that there is disparity in terms of the actual roles, the perceived 
uh, the level of awareness in terms of the function and the actual implementation of both the gover BACMA governing board and the LGUs that are present in the area. Uh, in this case, they are the human resources that are needed, that are need, needing the attention and uh, they are also the human resources that could become stewards of this important river system. Hence, there should be the recommendation in terms of proper rehabilitation and management of MMORS uh, would need a strengthened central local integration that would mean the support coming from the national government to the local government. It, it doesn't, just doesn't mean the devolution or the centralization like um, giving up of uh, so, um, the power coming from the center to the periphery. It would mean more than that. It would mean the presence of activities, projects, and programs that would promote capacity building and also strengthen institutional support. There's also a need to have a systematic review of the WACMA Governing Board 10-year action plan. And in terms of policy analysis and implementation, monitoring and evaluation is a very important and crucial aspect so as not to um, duplicate the second generation problems and in this case uh, we are also recommending them to develop a financial and annual plan with short-term targets so that they will be able to have a checklist and if they have done one of the activities then that would improve their um, sense of accountability and also their commitment towards the rehabilitation of the river system. Uh, that could also solve the problem in terms of the declining commitment of these stakeholders. <laughs> and also the strategies, like what I said, um, will be able to determine the points of collaboration in order to avoid fragmentation among the institutions and organizations. We would like to emphasize that even if they have different roles and responsibilities, they should be working in harmony with each other. So in this case, uh, we would want to avoid the fragmentation that could occur in the area. Also, um, we, we found out that the lack of regular feedback regarding to the result of the water quality monitoring data and the science-based information limits the planning and policy development process of the LGU within MMORS WACMA. So the lack of feedback doesn't just limit the commitment of the people, but it also have, has an effect in terms of the development planning. Um, we are very much familiar that if they have not come up with a suitable and tailor-fitted development plan, then the resources that has been appropriated will not be optimized to its efficiency. So in this case, uh, we would want to recommend to discuss and plan approaches on how to consolidate the, and systematize multiple reports as well as to come up with plans that are integrated so it would be utilized by different sectors and also would come up with projects that would promote holistic perspective. At the end, we do not just look as at water as a resource, as an important um, economic resource, but we also could look at water and the issues connected to water as human rights and justice issues. And these human rights and justice issues affect the welfare of the community, hereby affecting not just social development but sustainable development as well. Hence, this, project, uh, this research emphasizes, together with other researches, the need to promote an integrated human nature interaction wherein there should be capacitation of the stakeholders as well as policy reforms together with the protection and management of environmental resources. So, this is the end of the presentation and we would like to thank the UP Center for Integrative and Development Studies for the research grant, the Southeast Asian 
Regional Center for Graduate Study and Research in Agriculture for the Travel Grant, and of course, UP University of the Philippines, as well as more so our gratitude towards the MMRS Governing Board, the communities, and um, MMRS who have participated in our research. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Marina, for that very interesting presentation. The floor is now open for our audience comments, insights, and questions. Please use the microphone located at the middle and kindly introduce yourself and the organization that you represent. Anyone who wants to take the first crack? Dr. Norwegian? This is not a question, but uh a recommendation based on my uh, uh, training when I was with the uh, College of Forestry at the Bureau of Forestry at the DNR and with the building industry in Mindanao, the Parada region and Central Mindanao. First, to preserve the river, the river to prevent erosion of the river banks, we plant bamboos at the, above the river banks at least two meters away, a meter or two hours away from the edge of the river bank, because uh, between the, just above the river banks and the uh, line of bamboos, we plant now a fern, which is used for food, and uh, kanko, a plant kanko. And then, in the lower banks, we plant now, we, 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 the river itself, we now uh, place uh, kangkong. So that instead of buying kangkong in the market, we we'll just rather. <laughs> and then uh, the technology from uh, Marcos State University is, Marcos Memorial State University is, in between the spiny bamboos, we plant bio. Because the bio has a small hole and the place is very thick. Now they produce, we can produce charcoal. And then, in the, in the, during the start of the rainy season, there is this uh, termites with uh, wings uh, going to our uh, lamps, lights. So we, we, we cut some of this and put them, uh, throw them in the bamboo groves and they will now produce uh, mounds and during the rainy season here now we will produce, uh, uh, this will produce mushroom we call this in Ilocano these are very small but be careful that when you gather the mushroom the mushroom must, the mushroom must have no ring in this stem because of this ring, facing the whole, you will be going to the cemetery or to the hospital. Now, my experience when I was in the industry was above the bamboo, bamboo uh, lines of bamboos, we plant now bananas and avocados for food and for livelihood. For uh, our, our experience is. Uh, this is uh, the, the rights of Apaka should be uh, of uh, uh, Saba and Latitan. This, uh, these two species tolerate shade, partial shade. Then the Apaka should be in the upper upper part. The role now of this, is, uh, aside from uh, being the source of food in livelihood, they will be the water. They, 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 they contribute water to the lines of to the rows of bamboo. So the bamboo will have two sources of water. Coming the water coming from the bananas in the Abaca and from the from the river because the bamboo produces several meters long of uh, roots. You will you will notice if you plant them uh, you, that the banks of the river or the creeks will be uh, maraming rose and bamboo stone 
And then, our experience when I was in the, the uh, Litco company, the companies in Caraga is, we compartmentalize the tricks. The about the trick that's about uh, total treatment as well, in about the main side, the water. Uh, we, comp we, we, uh, we put uh, compartment walls, but there is this door in the middle, we put the nets. So the river, the water continues to flow, but uh, because of the net and the, the walls, compartment walls, the case of the water, the eel, the fish, the whatever water uh, uh, lunch there, they will be in the pans. And then, when you will, uh, you want to harvest, you, you put a, a door, shall we say, a lower door, at the upper door, and then the lower door, the water now will, and then instead of cooking, you just speak and put in your, <laughs> in your sack, the piece. So, uh, again, uh, according to Pekamar, uh, when I, 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 I spoke in one of the seminars of the Pekamar, they have this compartmentalized system in Paksanghan for the day. I have not seen this. But uh, what we did there in, uh, in, to prevent the water, uh, what do you call this, carrying your walls along your, uh, across your river, your creeks, what we put is, is a series of logs below, stones, and then about a, 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 a foot or two, uh, and the upper part is the Lawanit boards. Because the Lawanit board is waterproof. And, uh, well, to those of you who will be graduating and going to the field, I suggest you do this. Because then you will have food. Because uh, from the bamboos from the, you will have lagoon. And very nice uh, lagoon, lagoon. You will have honeymoon every day, every night, if you will have lagoon. Because accordingly, the lagoon is very nutritious. <laughs> and uh, instead of uh, uh, what buying, you just gather. So, uh, fellow graduates, when you will go to the field, I suggest you do this. Because uh, it's, uh, aside from uh, you know, keeping the water uh, flowing pure, uh, you can have not, you can not produce food and uh, uh, develop livelihood for the people out there so that they will, they will not intrude into the forest and destroy the trees. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Those are noted. So I would just like to ask if, um, if the study would continue for for some time, what do you think would be the bearing if somehow um, the the authors would be uh, collaborating with other other colleges such as College of Agriculture and Forestry, kagaya ni Sir ni Doc Mauricio. Um, what would be, uh, sa tingin niyo po, uh, ano po yung mas um, maganda pang mangyayari po for, para po dun sa projects na may implement po? po. Okay, thank you for that question, um, Shori. Uh, actually, this project has been tied up with a larger program of the Water Bees, uh, of um, Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation and Pure Earth Institute. And um, we have the Department of Social Development Services it, of CHE has been um, promoting collaboration with Biotech. So we have been looking at rehabilitation of the 
MMORS system using bioremediation. Also, we have for rehabil uh, collaboration with DEFCOM, the Col uh, College of Development Communication, in terms of the communication plans and frameworks. And um, we also have another project, but we're not part of it already, and that's with CESAM and the ADD. And they are looking at the aspect of MMORS in terms of the planning, and they have been working on databases and um, the command system in terms of creating simulation programs for local development planning. Thank you very much for your informative presentation. I am Lugna from the National University of Malaysia. Okay, I just want to know that you have uh, mentioned about the pollution source like uh, domestic source, industrial source, but uh, in other ways the fisheries or aquaculture practice can be a good or best co contributor of the pollution also. So uh, I just want to know, do you have any plan of uh, of management, we manage this water body based on the sustainable aquaculture or sustainable use of uh, water bodies that can be included in your management plan. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay, just I want to know do you have any? plans or any maybe you can train the aquaculture practice practice who are practicing the aquaculture the use of sustainable sustainable use of the water bodies in terms of uh, maybe aquaculture or maybe other users who are using the aquaculture. Okay, thank so, you very much. Thank you. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. Um, yes, um, part of the program is to capacitate the local stakeholders, especially the aquaculture communities. So we have already conducted uh, that's the organizational development component um, handled by the Department of Social Development Services. And um, we have already start, uh, came up with specific vision, mission, and goals for these local communities from Mekawai, Marilo, and Abando, the fishing communities in the area. Also, we have assessed the existing um, best practices and the adaptation strategies that has been employed, not just by this specific sector, but for other sectors. And we tried to compare also the adaptations in the area because we found out, for example, that the local fisher folks have changed the structure of their fish cages in order to address the shocks and vulnerabilities coming from the weather, uh, the climate in the area. And also they have changed the pattern of um, feeding when it for example, there are periods when they use the natural resource or the lab lab as we call it in the field. And but there are also times when the phytoplankton are not present in the area, then they would need to uh, use the commercial fields for the area. So that has been another effort for another component and they are already coming up with modules and after the different trainings and capacity building activities in the area. And we hope that these modules will be translated into um, the content of the modules also will be translated and mainstream in various uh, organizations also, not just the ones that we have been working with. Thank you. Okay, we have room for one last question. Good afternoon, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good afternoon, Ma. Merry Christmas. Uh, I was just curious, if you're talking about the welfare of the community, that's why you have this bioremediation. I was curious if you have a health component in this program. Uh, I'm very even more curious about water quality. For example, you mentioned you have a lot of industrial waste and domestic waste, and then you have fish ponds on the downstream. Yes. Who eats the fish? Of course, it's going to be the community. Yes. There was a study earlier on, like, say, 20 years ago. Uh, you are still young. Uh, it was water quality in the Laguna Lake. 
and they found out that there was very high incidence of gender benders because of the, I like this topic very much, uh, because of the pregnant women eating balut from ducks feeding in Laguna Lake, which is polluted. So, in that respect, I just like to take the trend that if you are into fish, and any pregnant woman who eats the fish, you will definitely have some gender bending children. <laughs> so I don't know if you will have that component in your future research that would take care of water quality because this is really water quality. That's it, thanks. Just a comment. Thank you, Mom. We would want to take off from that because as of now, uh, we have just started at the project has covered multiple uh, concerns but we haven't ventured much on that aspect because we need to establish different baselines we also need to have capacitated communities we also need to uh, look at the plans that have been implemented in the area but no ten pop we would want to have uh, research going to that direction thank you Pop. Okay, so that wraps up our open forum. Let us all give Professor Malina a big round of applause.